Every year, 67,000 Americans visit emergency rooms due to table saw accidents. Of these, 4,000 people lose fingers completely. Have you ever wondered how a piece of wood knows the difference between your finger and itself? Today, I'll explain how saw safety systems detect human contact like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand how flesh becomes an electrical signal, why the blade destroys itself to save your finger, and whether this technology actually works when milliseconds matter. The secret isn't in the blade recognizing your finger. It's in your finger disrupting an invisible electrical field that surrounds the spinning metal. Every saw stop table saw pumps a tiny electrical signal through its blade, creating what engineers call a capacitive field around the cutting edge. Your body, being roughly 60% water and full of dissolved salts, conducts electricity much better than dry wood. The moment your skin gets close enough to that spinning blade, you become part of the electrical circuit and the system detects the sudden change in current flow. This detection happens through a sensor that's constantly measuring the electrical properties of whatever's near the blade. Think of it like a smoke detector for flesh. It's always monitoring, always ready, sampling the electrical environment thousands of times per second. The baseline reading when cutting wood stays relatively stable because wood is a poor conductor. But human skin changes everything. The moment flesh approaches within millimeters of that electrified blade, the capacitance spikes dramatically, and the system knows instantly that something conductive, something alive, is about to make contact. The electronics behind this detection are surprisingly simple but incredibly fast. A microprocessor continuously sends small electrical pulses through the blade while simultaneously measuring how much current returns. When you're cutting pine or oak, the readings stay predictable. Wood might have some moisture, but nothing like the electrical signature of a human body. Your finger doesn't even need to touch the blade to trigger detection. Getting within three millimeters is enough to change the electrical field and sound the alarm. Here's what nobody tells you about the detection speed. The system identifies human contact in less than five milliseconds. That's faster than your pain receptors can even register what's happening. From the moment your finger disrupts that electrical field to the moment the blade stops spinning, only three milliseconds pass. For comparison, it takes you 150 milliseconds just to blink. The saw has detected, decided, and acted before your brain even processes that something's wrong. But detection is only half the story. Stopping a 10-inch blade spinning at 4,000 RPM requires destroying the saw to save your finger. The moment the sensor detects flesh, it triggers an aluminum brake block to slam into the spinning blade with tremendous force. This brake block is designed to be obliterated on impact. It's essentially a sacrificial part that gets shredded to absorb the blade's kinetic energy. The collision stops the blade in less than one full rotation, but it also ruins both the blade and the brake cartridge. Every finger you save costs about $80 in replacement parts. The physics of this emergency stop are violent and precise. That spinning blade carries enormous kinetic energy, enough to slice through your finger like butter. The aluminum brake block doesn't gradually slow the blade down. It destroys itself while creating enough friction and impact force to halt 3,000 pounds of rotational energy almost instantly. The sound is like a small explosion, followed by the blade retracting below the table surface, pulled down by a spring mechanism that activates during the emergency stop. Here's where it gets wild. The system has to distinguish between wet wood and human skin without constantly triggering false alarms. Green lumber, pressure-treated wood, and pieces with high moisture content can sometimes fool the sensors because they conduct electricity better than kiln-dried boards. Early versions of the technology triggered false stops when cutting certain types of wet wood, destroying expensive blades and brake cartridges for no reason. Modern sensors use more sophisticated algorithms that can differentiate between the electrical signature of moisture in wood versus the complex conductivity patterns of human flesh. The calibration process happens automatically every time you turn on the saw. During startup, the system takes baseline electrical readings of the blade, the motor, and the surrounding environment. It's learning what normal looks like before you start cutting. Temperature, humidity, even static electricity in the air can affect these readings, so the system constantly adjusts its sensitivity thresholds. This calibration is why you should never bypass or disable the safety system. It's not just monitoring for contact, it's adapting to the specific conditions in your workshop. But here's the kicker. The technology can't tell the difference between your finger and other conductive materials. Touch that spinning blade with a piece of metal, wet gloves, or even a damp rag, 
and the brake will fire just as violently as if flesh made contact. This isn't a design flaw, it's a safety feature. The system errs on the side of caution because the consequences of missing an actual finger are catastrophic. Better to destroy a $40 blade stopping for a false alarm than to fail when real flesh is in danger. Installation of these safety systems isn't retrofitable to existing saws. The detection electronics, brake mechanism, and emergency retraction system are integrated into the saw's design from the ground up. The blade itself becomes part of the electrical circuit requiring specific mounting hardware and electrical connections that standard table saws don't have. This integration explains why safety-equipped saws cost significantly more than conventional models. You're not just buying a brake system, you're buying an entirely different machine. Here's the part that changed everything. This technology emerged from a single inventor's determination to solve a problem that had maimed woodworkers for over a century. Steve Gass, a patent attorney and amateur woodworker, developed the saw stop system in his garage after calculating that existing safety guards and techniques still allowed thousands of serious injuries every year. His original prototype used a hot dog to demonstrate finger detection. The sausage's moisture and salt content closely mimics human tissue's electrical properties. Gas spent seven years refining the system, testing it on everything from chicken breasts to actual cadaver fingers to perfect the detection algorithms. The industry fought this technology for over a decade, arguing it was too expensive and would make saws less reliable. Major manufacturers lobbied against mandatory safety standards, claiming that proper technique and existing guards were sufficient protection. They argued that making the technology mandatory would price entry-level users out of the market and that false triggering would frustrate professional users. The debate became so heated that it reached congressional hearings, with injury victims testifying alongside industry executives who insisted the technology wasn't ready for mass adoption. Testing of flesh detection systems happens under controlled conditions that would make you squeamish. Engineers use ballistic gelatin calibrated to match human tissue density electrical conductivity, and moisture content. They literally fire these flesh simulants into spinning blades to measure detection speed and stopping distance. The most realistic tests use cadaver fingers obtained from medical research facilities. Each test destroys a brake cartridge and blade, making comprehensive testing extremely expensive. Professional woodworkers initially resisted the technology, arguing that the system's sensitivity could trigger false stops during normal operation disrupting workflow, and destroying expensive blades. Cabinet shops worried about the ongoing cost of brake cartridge replacements, especially in high production environments where false triggers could happen multiple times per day. Some craftsmen felt the technology encouraged careless technique, a kind of moral hazard where safety systems make people less careful about proper procedure. Here's where things get interesting. The liability implications of this technology are reshaping the entire power tool industry. Once safety systems prove they can prevent injuries, manufacturers without the technology face increased lawsuit exposure. If a competitor's saw could have prevented an amputation, why should injured users accept that their saw couldn't? This legal pressure has accelerated adoption faster than any safety regulation, as companies race to avoid being the manufacturer that could have prevented an injury but chose not to. The detection system's reliability depends on environmental conditions that most users never consider. Metal dust in the air can affect sensor readings. Static electricity from dust collection systems can create false signals. Even the type of flooring in your workshop, concrete versus wood, changes the electrical environment around the saw. Professional installations often include grounding systems and environmental controls to maintain consistent detection performance especially in commercial shops where false triggers cost serious money. Some high-end installations include electromagnetic shielding around the saw to prevent interference from welders, motors, or radio equipment in adjacent areas. Emergency medical data tells the real story about finger injuries from table saws. The typical accident involves the blade contacting flesh for 50 to 100 milliseconds before the user can react enough time for a spinning blade to completely sever multiple fingers. Flesh detection systems reduce contact time to under 5 milliseconds, transforming potential amputations into minor cuts that require stitches instead of reconstructive surgery. Emergency room physicians report that saw stop injuries typically involve 3 to 5 stitches, while conventional saw accidents often require multiple surgeries and months of rehabilitation. The economics of finger detection technology create a strange calculation. Is your finger worth more than the ongoing cost of safety equipment? 
Each brake cartridge replacement costs about $80, plus the price of a new blade. Heavy users might trigger the system once or twice per year through false alarms or actual contact events. Insurance companies have started offering premium discounts for shops that use safety-equipped saws, recognizing that preventing even one serious injury saves tens of thousands in medical costs and liability claims. Here's what nobody tells you about bypassing these safety systems. It's possible, but it leaves digital evidence. Professional models include bypass modes for cutting conductive materials like aluminum or carbon fiber, but every bypass event gets logged in the saw's memory. Insurance investigators and safety inspectors can download this data after accidents, potentially voiding coverage or increasing liability if the system was disabled when injury occurred. The technology doesn't just protect your fingers. It creates a permanent record of your safety decisions. So how does a saw know when your finger approaches the blade? It turns your body into part of an electrical circuit, detects the change in conductivity within milliseconds, then destroys itself to stop the blade before serious injury occurs. The system works because human flesh has a unique electrical signature that's impossible to mistake for wood, and because three milliseconds of detection time is fast enough to prevent catastrophic contact. Whether the ongoing costs and occasional false triggers justify the protection depends on how much your fingers are worth to you. Would you pay an extra $500 up front, plus occasional brake replacements to keep all 10 fingers? Or do you trust your technique enough to bet your body parts on traditional blade guards?